All right, so the third video I'm sharing to TikTok is from Jeremy Begbie. And Jeremy Begbie is this big name in the arts and theology. He was at Duke while I was there, maybe part-time, I'm not sure. And this is actually one of my favorite videos from the After Yellow Ribbon promotional videos. Um, because All of the videos, none of the videos are from service members or veterans. They're all civilian faculty members. But Begbie uh, quotes a poem from Wilfred Owen at the end. And Wilfred Owen is one of the best war poets. He was an officer, but he dissented against World War I, of all things. And he ended up dying like a week before the armistice. And Begbie quotes this poem at a Calvary near the Anker. Um, and as I said, Begbie is not a, a vet, but the clarity and the compassion that he is able to evoke and the fact that he brings in the words of a soldier uh, themselves, I think makes this one of the videos that has truly, for me, stood the test of time. And it's one that I continue to go back to. I mean, Begbie's got a great reading voice, but also Wilfred Owen, Siegfried Sassoon, um, even some of the more recent poets I'm a big fan of. And he makes sure to include them, which is something that the rest of the faculty videos didn't do. So here's Jeremy Begbie on the arts as a healing resource for soldiers and veterans. If the experience of war always, for nearly everybody involved, will bring some experience of trauma, fragmentation, things splitting apart, disintegration, so we lose a sense of continuity of form. What the arts are doing, whatever else they're doing, is they're giving form to our experience and to our feelings. I'm a theologian, and I see myself as a biblical theologian, so I suppose I always look first to Scripture in thinking about how to address any issue, but certainly the issue of, of trauma after war. I'm also a musician and very interested in the arts, and especially in the way that the arts can be vehicles of healing and reintegration in people's lives. And when it comes to war, of course, and the victims of uh, of war and those who have fought in war and return home, very often their experience will be one of bewilderment, certain sense of isolation, emotional isolation, perhaps, and fragmentation, things falling apart. The arts are a way of reintegrating us, reshaping us. And then we've got to also remember, of course, the arts are basically creative. That is, you are making something. You are not leaving wreckage. Indeed, you can make something out of even the wreckage, and that's an extraordinarily powerful experience as well, out of broken things out of ugly things. You could make something that speaks of your emotion or a beauty or, of, or, of, or something you feel strongly about. In that connection, I often think of the poet Wilfred Owen. Wilfred Owen is probably the greatest of the First World War poets. And he uh, had shell shock and he had to be taken home. And in a convalescent home in Edinburgh, he wrote not all, but most of his famous poetry. He's not only just telling the world of what's going on out there. Back home in Britain, of course, so many were unaware of the sheer horror of what was actually happening to these young men. So he's not only telling them about that, he's giving form to his experience, giving form to his trauma, so that he can be clear about what he's angry about, about what he's really feeling, and perhaps even what he should be feeling or not feeling. And poetry, I think, can do that. One ever hangs where shelled roads part. In this war, he too lost a limb, but his disciples hide apart. And now the soldiers bear with him. Near Golgotha strolls many a priest, and in their faces there is pride that they were flesh marked by the beast by whom the gentle Christ's denied. The scribes on all the people shove and brawl allegiance to the state. But they who love the greater love lay down their lives. They do not hate.